Hey guys, Frank here, your virtual general aviation aviator, and today I am in the the Skyhawk, the Skyhawk C-152, uh, which is a trainer for most folks, but I'm actually going to take a GA flight in it. Now, as you can see, it's tied down, and I'm at K Alpha Victor Lima, or K-A-V-L, a.k.a. Asheville, North Carolina. And we are going to take a interstate flight. Yep, we're going to fly from one state to another. going to fly not to Tennessee, but to South Carolina. Yep. So, uh, plan is to fly this little guy to Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, Kilo Sierra Papa Alpha. Uh, KSPA and let's get started so one thing about being a virtual general aviation aviator is that I can fly a multitude of aircraft all right so let's get started here all right so the first thing we want to do let's go ahead and check out um, let's see check out fuel fuel is on and check out fuel quantity um, let's start the master now this guy has no avionics bus uh, so the Garmin uh, the aftermarket Garmin that th that I had installed in this aircraft is tied to the master bus all right and we got half a tank of fuel on both wings that's consistent with what I uh, checked doing my walk around so I am good to go so let's see next thing all right so let's go ahead and turn our beacon light on and we we'll go ahead and prime it a little bit one two three four five that should be enough uh, I don't think priming is really modeled in this aircraft I could be wrong I don't fly it that often all right so let's um, what's going on with my put my mixture here okay so looks like that self resolved all right okay I hope it's self resolved you know anyway let's Let's pull it out just a touch and I don't know what's going on with that, but let's crack the throttle. Check the parking brake. Parking brake is engaged. And let's look out here and clear our prop area. Make sure there's nobody out there. All right. And we yell, clear prop. All right, and I don't want to crank the start of any more than 10 seconds that that's placard on the yoke here. And I got a good start. She started immediately, almost like she was already warm. Um, okay, so let's uh, pull our... Pull our RPMs down to a thousand and go ahead and get on our GPS here and start a flight plan. So we are at Asheville and we're going to do a direct flight to uh, Kilo Sierra Papa Alpha Spartanburg. Uh, 42 nautical miles. And in this aircraft, it shouldn't take, but um, let's see, we're going less than two miles a minute. So if we were going a mile a minute, it would take 42 minutes. And if we were going two miles a minute, it would take 21 minutes. Uh, we're going about 100. Um, well, yeah, we're going about... We're going, we'll be traveling at about 95 knots, so, um, at two miles, what I say, 21 minutes, 
a, um, a minute and yeah it should take about 20 25 minutes I think um, and I'm not using the uh, uh, electronic what is it called you guys help me out and it let uh, EB uh, EBS uh, EBC uh, electronic I mean no um, what the shucks you know the thing that we use it to calculate stuff in flight school um, with the uh, that you rode with huh man I don't know why that's slipping um, I can't think of what that thing is called EBS um, golly <laughs> anyway let me get my um, alternator started and go ahead and turn my taxi lights on and let's get our aiders here that's what I like about the this guy here is so convenient all right So, I turn. Asheville Regal Information Radio Tango. Sonic. 1900 Zulu weather. Wind calm. Visibility more Tango. than 10. Sky conditions 18,000 scattered. 33,000 scattered. Temperature 16. Dew point minus 9. Altimeter 2992. 2992. Arriving runway 35. Departing runway 35. Advise on initial contact, you have Tango. Tango. And I need to get my winds. I didn't hear it the first time. The winds, anyway. Asheville Regal Information Tango. 1900 Zulu weather. Wind calm. Calm. Visibility okay. more than 10. Sky conditions 18,000 scattered. 33,000 scattered. No, no clouds below 18,000. All right, so nine. we are good to go. Altimeter Let's go ahead and nine nine dial two. in ground. Arriving. And a tower on standby. And let's see. So we would be flying. Looks like we'll be flying. Let's see where's my compass rose? This is north. This is west. Southeasterly. So, given that we'll be going easterly, and um, which is this route, then we'll want an odd number. Uh, we at two nine nine two. So let's see what our elevation is on this field uh, so I'm um, calculating 21 uh, about 2150 let's see what what sky vector says I feel elevation is Uh, Sky Vector says it's 20, 2164. Um, so, so, yep. So, 2992. Um, yep, so we're close enough with within uh, 75 um, feet. So, so that's, uh, that's about right. Okay. All right. And I don't recall removing my tie downs, but I think uh, in the just flight aircraft, the tie downs will remove automatically. Don't need, uh, didn't mean for that to happen. Um, let's see, so let's just fire it back up here. Okay. Uh, 
was thinking that this guy right here would be the auto fuel switch that would switch from one tank to another and the 152 don't need an auto switcher fuel switcher which is why I turned it off okay so so anyway let's call out and start with our taxi uh, no and we know we want runway 35 and that means that let, let's make sure that our uh, thing is calibrated which is not so let's do a one button calibrate all right and three five is going to be going to my left so we want to take off to the left so that means that we can uh, I'm sorry yeah we want to be going to the right when I take off um, of this way so that means that I'm going to taxi to the left all right is that is that right um, actually I'm gonna taxi yeah I'm gonna taxi to the left yep all right so taxi lights are on beacon is on and uh, I'm gonna treat this as a um, as a untowered um, airport a gulf even though they do technically have a tower, but I don't have to, this way I don't have to be the controller and the pilot. Asheville traffic, standby. Okay, I'm November 5-3 Oscar Hotel. Oscar traffic Skyhawk 531 Oscar Hotel is taxiing to runway 35 uh, for a southeast departure, Asheville. All right. Something is going on with my with my mixture, and I think my my rudders are tied to the mixture. Cause when I mash the toe brake, I'm getting mixture. So hang on, guys. I'll be right back. So I got that sorted out, and as you can see, my tow brakes are working the way they should, and let's um, follow the yellow brick road to the taxiway. Now one thing about the the sky the Skyhawk 152 is well you know I know the 172 is a Skyhawk and for some reason I can't recall well I don't recall whether or not they refer to the uh, 152 as a Skyhawk also um, so I'm not really sure about that so. I'm going to refrain from calling it a Skyhawk, and I'm going to refer to it as a uh, Cessna. So I am crossing on to Alpha.
we get our taxi on. Okay, so I'm at 3-5 and holding short, so I'll make a call out in just a second. Now, I want you guys to watch me when I get ready to land this aircraft in Spartanburg and see if I remember to pull that carp heat when, before, I, um, before I decrease my, uh, before I, push in the throttle um, for for that final descent. Uh, that's something that that uh, that I tend to forget to do and so I'm gonna let you guys be the carb heat police for me. All right. All right, so let's go to tower. Nothing is coming. Ashfield traffic, Cessna 530, 53 Oscar Hotel is taking runway 35 for departure to the southeast, Asheville. All right, so strobes can come on, landing lights can come on, taxi can go off. Um, Take off flaps ten um, I think that's ten degrees on this guy. Could might be twenty, um, but in either case, uh, we should be configured for takeoff. And this guy here is a runway that's been closed down. Um, and looks like they moved the runway out a few feet, probably it made it wider and longer. That would be my guess. And let's take all the available runway. Get 
land up here. All right, and we are ready to go. So, full throttle. Air speed's coming alive. And I did not set my um, my trim, but she wants to fly, and we're wheels up, 60 knots, and we'll climb out at about 74 knots, and I think that's about the POH for climb out on this aircraft. We have 70. I think 74. Usually gives us about 500 feet per minute normally. And I'm going to hand fly it the whole way. Let's see. So. Asheville traffic. Cessna. Is turning left downwind. For a southeast departure. Asheville. Actually, I'm trying to crosswind the downwind, but I just want to uh, make a call in case anybody's in the area that has some idea of what's going on with me. All right, so let's get it trimmed. about my 74 somewhere there about that gives me right now looks like I'm picking up about 700 feet per minute and flaps up landing lights can come off retrim And if I'm not mistaken, I think I wanted uh, 7,500. Okay, so let me turn on course. That's real traffic. Cessna 531 Hotel Oscar leaving the pattern. Actually, I'm already out of the pattern because I think the pattern, um, well, suffice to say, I was already out of the pattern, but well, maybe not. I, um, that's the one thing about flying so many different aircraft that um, that I forget how much longer things take in this aircraft simply because it flies somewhat slower. Okay. So I got that I got that P force because I still got four throttle still in a climb, so I'm going to pull my throttle back and to get it out of the, um, to get it in more of a safe zone, retrim here, and continue my climb.
and that may have yeah that did um, do a little bit to that P force and I want to see if I can't maintain roughly a five to seven hundred foot per minute climb all right so I can start adjusting my mixture I don't really have a any gauges to determine what would be optimal so I'm adjusting my mixture pretty much by ear now I can go rich a peak or lean a peak and the way I do that once I once I level out then I determine how I exactly where I want to set my um, my mixture at but for right now I just want to try to get the maximum amount of power for this climb and I am at 80 knots that's about what 80 about 90 miles per hour and I still got 36 nautical miles so I think I'm gonna level out at 55 that way that should get me let's see um, the question is how high are the mountain ranges so let me take a peek at the charts and look P factor there Well, actually, the P factor should get in the left turn in tendency and it wants to turn right. Let's see, okay. Maybe, uh, maybe winds aloft. Level off here at 55. And find that point where I'm happy with, um, with where my nose is at. So I'm, I'm looking at my horizon and comparing it against my vertical climb indicator and my altitude, my, my artificial horizon to determine where I want my nose at on the horizon to be straight and level. Okay, so I'm happy right there. All right, so I'm gonna pull my my um, my prop back to about 23, and I'm gonna retrim.
getting slow. And I should have been speeding up. So I'm not managing my power that well. So I'm going to reset that RPM to about 24. And I think, yeah, okay, we, we're at about 90 knots. That's about what we can expect. 30, 30 um, nautical miles to go. And I am the autopilot, or as they say, for the 172, the trim wheel is the poor man's autopilot. So I'm 90 knots. A little bit to the right of my course. And I am, uh, even though I am flying by hand, I am following my GPS. Oh man, isn't that gorgeous? I love mountains. And these mountains up around Ap um, Asheville are some of my favorites. Be honest with you, I actually like going southwest of Asheville to uh, Brevard and um, Franklin. And don't worry about that. I got a package that I started installing and never really finished. In fact, I really do need to finish it because I don't have any moving traffic on the on the highway down now. If you guys would like to see me do a video on configuring some of the stuff for scenery, <coughs> let me know. Leave it in the comments. I'll see what I can do. And I'm going to turn that yoke on so that you can see these little micro adjustments that I'm making. So, feels like I might have some wind. Twenty-five miles out from my airport. But actually, I'm glad I didn't climb up to 7,500 now. And that's one of the things I like about VFR flight flying. Um, these things are purely at pilots discretion as long as the altitude is appropriate which means that if I'm going if my airport is easterly then I need to be at a, at a odd number and like um, like 5,000 7,000 and of course on VFR hence the 500 and if my airport is westerly then from my takeoff destination then I need to be I need to fly at an even number like 4,000 6,000 and of course anytime I'm flying via far I'm going to add that 5,000 I mean I'm sorry that 500 so if I'm flying easterly then which I am then 
in this case some 5,000 in a VFR so I add the 500 which is how I come up with the 5,500 for, for my cruising altitude. I hope that makes sense. Of course most of the people who watch these videos I suspect may have some idea. Alright, so look at my terrain map on my GPS. You can see that I am getting out of the mountains, I'm leaving the mountains now. I'm in foothills. And now that I'm only 20, my, um, about 21 nautical miles away, I'm going to go ahead and get down to 35. So, to peel, to peel off, I'm not going to use my yoke to get down. I'm just going to use my power. So I'm going to decrease my power and my nose should automatically drop and I want a roughly about a 500 feet per minute descent now bear in mind if I'm descending if I'm making a turn then my wings will lose lift and that will add to my descent but to get a true descent, then I need to be flying pretty much straight. Okay, so I'm 23 on the RPMs, and I've got a 500 feet per minute descent, and I'm still at 90. 598 nautical um, my speed is still constant at about that 95 98 knots okay so while I'm descending I really need to kind of get an idea what to expect when I get there now generally speaking you would do this stuff on the ground and have an idea. Um, so I got runways five and two, three. Um, let me go ahead and put my AWAS frequency in. And the I want to say Unicom, CTAF, Unicom, okay. Unicom is going to be 123, all right? So that's what we want to use, 123. And now let me go. So I can just go ahead and put the um, tune to AWAS now. Go ahead and get a weather report Spartanburg downtown weather wind calm visibility more than 10 sky conditions 19,000 scattered 34,000 scattered temperature 19 dew point minus 9 altimeter 2992 so winds are calm Want to make Spartanburg downtown double check. Wind, wind calm, visibility wind calm. more than 10. Sky conditions 19,000 scattered. 
All right, so winds are calm. I'm 14 nautical miles out. Uh, soon we'll be 14 nautical miles out. And I've learned that in this simulator, I'm not going to be the sea 14 nautical miles ahead of me. Five hundred to go for a level. Fear elevation is eight hundred, so um, pattern is going to be eighteen hundred. Trying to stay ahead of the aircraft here. And now, in real life, I probably want to see if I see other traffic and land whichever way they're landing. Um, and R. I could overfly the the field at 1300 500 below pattern and are either 500 above the field uh, 500 is it, I think it's 500 below pattern and um, and check out the the um, the Feel and make either a tear drop or a um, downwind turn to to land, uh, but I would have to know ahead of time what just what um, run what what runway I want. Okay, so. I think what we'll do is go ahead and fly in or on the left downwind. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So I think I'll swing out about right here with this road and come in on this left downwind and then land on the five. Okay. So we've got a plan. It's always good to have a plan. And we're 500 feet below where we wanted, where we intended to level, level off. Now I can either climb back up to 3,500. Uh, but since I am only eight miles then I'm a from the field I am not going to climb back up so let me pull that power back all right let's do a, a glance check all right so guess lights let's go and turn our landing lights on Gas lights, undercarriage, mixture. Let's go mixture four. I mean, um, mixture is not on the spring. I mean, prop four, mixture prop, prop. No. My bad, mixture four and no prop. <laughs> All right. And let's look for the field now. So it should be out there somewhere. Okay, I think this is going to be it right here. Yep, that's going to be it. And just like in real life, 
these fields can be tough to see, tough to spot. Spartanburg traffic, Cessna 531 Oscar Hotel is inbound on the 45 for runway 05 and we're six miles out. Spartanburg. That was a terrible call because inbound on the 45 six miles out does not tell other traffic where I'm at. So I'm actually six miles to the northwest so that would have been better information so when I do this three mile okay so there's my airport here and 18 so I need to get get on down let me um, move up, move over so I can enter on the 45 Spartanburg traffic Cessna is four miles out to the northwest inbound on the 45 for runway 05 Let's do carb heat. Well, we do carb heat when we get a beam to numbers. So I have to say that out loud so I don't forget. All right, so at this point, I am concentrating on looking out the window, look for any other traffic in the area. Don't see any. Spartanburg traffic, Cessna, Cessna um, 531 Hotel Oscar is on downwind for runway 35, Spartanburg. Now, I want to see things because I said I was on downwind, but I don't. I need to find my airport. Because I may be let me get trimmed out here, get rid of this back pressure. I may be somewhere other than where I thought I was at. And the runway is 800 feet. And I don't want to fly the GPS, I want to fly visually. Um, okay, I think I think the runway is way over there. So, so I'm not really in the pattern. Let's see if we can get back up to um, 18 to pattern to pattern altitude. I didn't do a really good job getting um, 
getting on that downwind leg. Spotbird traffic. Cessna is on downwind runway 05, on left downwind runway 05 for four stop. Spartanburg. So, may not be on a perfect downwind, but at least if anybody else is out here, then they know to look for me. All right, glumps, carb heat, power back. Spartanburg traffic, Cessna is turning left base for runway 05, Spartanburg. And I'm turning the final already. Carp heat on, flaps, uh, one notch of flaps in. Speed 74 knots. Spartanburg traffic, Skyhawk, Cessna is on short final runway 05, um, full stop, Spartanburg. This aircraft has a really strong balloon effect, let's get trimmed. And 65 is about where I want to come in at. So if I can nail that speed, then generally I can butter a landing. It's, uh, it's often all about that speed. All right. Runway is made, I can cut power and float on in. Now hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And there's butter. I was hoping to be able to make that one, but make the next one. And this, guys, was literally a short interstate flight <laughs> cross country. All right. Spartanburg traffic, Cessna has cleared the runway, Spartanburg. Okay, so screws off, landing lights off, taxis on, carb heat in, clean up these flaps, and taxi to parking. Spartanburg traffic, Scott, uh, Cessna is taxing the parking, Spartanburg. I don't know the runway designation, so I'm um, not even sure how to get to parking, uh, but we'll follow the yellow brick road, right? Um, that's one thing that I know 
that we always want to do in ground operations is follow the yellow brick road. Now, I'm not one of those guys who give you a lot of external views primarily because um, I don't fly. I don't know anybody in real life who can get out of their aircraft and take a picture from this position. However, a lot of guys do mount cameras to the outside of the aircraft to try and simulate drone positions. Um, number two is, oftentimes, uh, I would give you more external views, but I uh, just don't think about it. And I do know that external views can add an element to to the to flying okay so let's get turned here got some differential braking going on all right and we'll park right here okay so slim which is uh Slim switches. We got um, and and then Ling I is for instruments. Uh, what is I instruments? Maybe no. Slim um, switches. Ling. I'm gonna turn this brake up. Get the brake going. Wow. Talk about doing some, some rolling. What is the terrain looking like? Why am I? I don't know what's going on here, guys. But I don't see any reason for, for my tail to have come up like that. Come down like that. Um. Well, I forgot what the I stand for, but I think the M stand for master. Um, ignition. <laughs> I is ignition. So it's, um, you can shut down in this order. Switches, ling, ignition, and master. And get this brake on. So... So anyway, guys, I don't know why um, the plane did that. Um, but let's take a quick look at the landing right quick, and then we'll call it. All right. So let's get back to the landing. find a good starting place don't want to be too far out and we'll go fast slow it down where I'm holding off, holding off, holding off, holding off, and just let the plane come down on its own. All right. Cool. And I want to see if there's anything that I can tell that would have caused the, the tail to come up.
Okay. And this is about where I decide to park. And so I kill my power there. I don't get it. But anyway, these things happen in sim simulators. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed the flight. Um, and apologies for the wonkiness. And you know what to do. Listen to this jingle. <laughs>